Hey, it's Craig here with MaritimeGardening.com. A lot of you see my garden in July and August. Everything looks so neat and organized and linear and geometric. And uh, it doesn't start out that way. So I thought I'd uh, take you with me today and just show uh, sort of uh, how I get there. Part of my process of getting there anyway. So uh, here I am with a bed where, uh, hey, so uh, uh, this is a bed of kale and spinach and uh, a kind of green, uh, another kind of green like a sorrel that uh, I direct seeded under one of my uh, hoop houses around uh, late March. And uh, of course the hoop house doesn't cover the whole bed. This bed's uh, 10 feet by 4 feet and the hoop house is 8 feet long. Uh, so I, you know, the part that didn't have a hoop post over it, I just threw a bunch of uh, yard waste. It happened to have all of these acorns in it. Like, I mean, hundreds of acorns. And I'd been noticing the last few weeks, squirrels and chipmunks running in and out of this part of the garden. <laughs> and that's because, uh, I don't know if you can, if it comes across on camera there, but there is like 200 oak trees <laughs> growing in that little two feet by four foot space. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I thought of cutting this out, but uh, I think it's worth sharing this. You know, things aren't always, in a lot of garden videos, everything's just sort of like, you know, the soil looks like it just came out of a bag and everything's always sort of uh, perfect. And uh, that's not just the case. I mean, some, there are a lot of times, most of the times I put down some sort of mulch, usually someone's yard waste. And, uh, you know, I just... Uh, move it to the side and plant something in. Sometimes I have to take the mulch off like I'm doing here. And most of the time it just comes off. <laughs> and other times there's 200 oak trees growing in your garden. So it's a bit of a pain to have to deal with and uh, you know, but it's no big deal. So I'm loading the stuff all, so all this uh, leaf mulch, it's mostly oak leaves and oak <laughs> acorns. And every weed, I'm gonna, there's some weeds growing in this garden. I'm, I'm basically going to take some of the plants. They're, they're, I, I, I seed everything pretty heavily. And then as the season progresses, as we get into May, June, um, when I think there's a string of rainy days ahead, which is what the forecast said when I shot this video, which was like three days ago. It's uh, like a Tuesday evening while I'm doing this voiceover. And I <coughs> recorded this on, I think... Saturday, like four days ago, I guess. It was supposed to rain all weekend. It didn't, but <laughs> you just never, you never know. So that's the best time to, basically, I'm going to take some of the plants, pluck them out, and, you know, plant them in the, the spaces where there's nothing growing. So almost like a transplant in a sense, right? Except it was never indoors. It's been, it's been outdoors under full sun. Uh, all season long and for those of you saying oh my goodness it must be really warm where you are no it's not um, these kale and spinach and that sorrel on, on the right where, where I'm kneeling um, if they had not been under a dome they'd be like an inch high <laughs> at most maybe two inches high I mean it's been cold here uh, everything every other bed where I direct seeded stuff and just left nature to take its course like without any sort of microclimate affected of it, uh, affected of any kind. Um, things are just barely getting started. Beets and carrots, they're like an inch high. They're just barely going, right? Um, so that's that's the difference, having some sort of uh, dome or, you know, any kind of, any means to like, you know, let the sunlight in and hold on to some of that warm air, keep it from blowing away. Uh, where I work, where I, where I guard, that makes a, a huge difference. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. So, what am I doing here? Normally, I wouldn't have to do this kind of work, right? Uh, normally, I'd just take the mulch off, smooth it out, and then plug the plants in. Um, and, you know, depending on the mulch, um, sometimes I just put the mulch back on. But when it's really rough mulch like this, oak leaves, where they, they, so during the winter I had mulch on this bed, but I had spruce boughs and stuff and it's just things to hold it down to keep it from blowing away. But now because I have to put mulch in between the rows, I need the, the mulch to be a bit finer. So the mulches that are heavy like this, by heavy, I'm not heavy, but the mulches with large pieces of things that can blow around. Uh, what I do is I take that all, I'm going to take all that and the weeds and everything else. I'm going to throw it on my lawn. I'm going to take my lawn mower with the leaf bag. I'm going to run over it with the lawn mower 
and it'll just mix it all up and add a little bit of green in there and uh, <clears throat> once it's been sort of chewed up by the lawnmower uh, it, it's it's smaller particles and they, they tend to stick together better and they don't blow around right they just it creates a nice clump of stuff and it does a pretty good job at suppressing weeds and it's just broken down that much more so the the worms and other organisms in the soil can get at it and they can do their magic and you know that's that's my process I don't always do that it really depends on on the situation and what I'm what I'm trying to use it for and what the application is it really <laughs> I'm not being vaguer but it really depends certainly for greens what you're seeing here is what I typically do um, now you know often with my greens I've got cardboard uh, in between the rows and so I don't have to do any any weeding like this I mean basically all I do is just find some sort of mulch and put it on top of the cardboard that's in between the rows and just let nature tour and take its course with that and this time of year uh, you know I find it's a perfect time if you need mulch um, your lawns getting of a I, I just let my lawn grow a little bit let it grow like you know skip a week of mowing it that's not hard to do I hate mowing my lawn and then I'll go out there with a, a bag now, normally I have a mulching blade on my mower and no, normally I just mow the lawn and let the grass fall and uh, you know let the let the lawn mower fertilize the lawn um, but if I do need mulch and I don't really have any kicking around I don't have any in reserve and my neighbors don't see me seem to be putting bags of leaves out um, I'll just mow my lawn with the leaf bag on and uh, use that those grass clippings for a mulch because you know it's grass clippings are a great mulch and it, it's extremely good at, at suppressing weeds I mean uh, rake up a bunch of grass and leave it in a pile on your lawn and see what happens to your lawn where if you leave it on there for a month you're gonna kill everything you know eventually that'll break down and stuff will start growing there but that'll take maybe a season uh, clump of grass on the grass kills the grass <laughs> so <laughs> grass clippings are a great weed suppressor um, even though they might have weed seeds in them but if it's, it's in a pile like that so they work really well and uh, um, I pretty sure they release a good amount of you know basically what's happening when you've got that rotting material it's it's slowly rotting down and there's things working on it and they're sort of doing their thing and pooping and all that sort of stuff and uh, every time it rains all that broken down stuff gets worked down into your soil and uh, feeds your plants so if you use a, a good mulch like that with a good amount of green in it and then you get a really good rain um, you'll probably notice about a week after that rain that your plants will really pick up and really grow because it's almost like you're um, you know pouring compost tea onto the bed um, so here I am there's I'm gonna show two different techniques and uh, for sort of plucking out and repositioning plants and I would tell anyone doing this that um, always leave some in reserve right don't go whole hog I mean so when I when I'm done plucking so I got a lot of kale plants growing in with one another and that's the way to do it see I, I grab those in a clump so there's probably like three plants there but I was able to get a really good root ball out with them instead of like bare rooting it um, you can pluck out the plants and bare root them and stick them back in the ground uh, carefully and you can get, get a bare rooted kale to to recover and take root and grow but uh, it's, everything's gonna happen a lot quicker and a lot easier if you just stick a clump in so um, when you stick like so let's say I grab a bunch of those plants and I'm using my bare hands so I can sort of feel around feel what I'm doing I find it's better I sort of get my fingers in around them that sort of thing but if you get a clump in there with a really good bunch of soil so you're really not exposing the root hairs you know after a few weeks and you've noticed the plant sort of adapted to being moved and just go in there with a pair of scissors and cut away all the extra plants so that there's only one you, let's say you got a clump of five plants they're growing them really close together you pick that up and you move it and after a week or so you just cut away don't pull them out because you'll mess up the roots just cut away the plants you don't want leave the biggest strongest one there and then it can just take over the space and be big and strong and healthy um, this one here that I just stuck in the ground that's basically bare rooted so I mean you sort of lean it up against the side like that and you you get the soil and make sure there's no air pockets and I mean that'll work but you'll notice the day afterwards and you got to water these and you got to protect them and you got to keep the Sun off and I'll talk more about that as we go along um, but you'll notice that the ones that were bare rooted 
Um, you'll probably lose some of the larger leaves. They'll just give up. You could cut the leaves off. That's another technique. But uh, you'll probably lose some of the larger leaves. You see how much is in that wheelbarrow. That's <laughs> just from that little 2 by 4 space. Um, yeah, you're going to lose some of your foliage. So just, just be cool and just accept that. Um, you know, the plant's going to sacrifice the larger leaves because it really can't. So see how it's bare-rooted? Um, so you can stick that in and it'll work. But the plant is going to sacrifice some of the larger foliage um, and favor the sort of younger stuff that's been coming up out of the center. That's just what's, you know, it's, it's unless you're really, really, if you get the perfect conditions, let's say you move these plants uh, in the evening and then it started to rain that night and the following day it was just overcast and it was intermittently raining and you just had weather like that for four days and the soil was perpetually moist and it was never really sunny and there was, you know, that was ideal conditions for the plant to, and there's another one of those damn <laughs> acorns. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was ideally sort of overcast and the plant really never got stressed too much from too much sun. Then, uh, you know, the, the bare rooted plant would probably be all right. But uh, yeah, if you're moving it and you're gonna get a lot of sun and some heat and stuff like that, you gotta be really careful. I think I show, I think I had a little bit of footage. My camera died at the end of this, but uh, I think the, the very next morning, uh, instead of it being rainy all day, it started being sunny. So I just uh, threw a tarp over the whole thing. <laughs> you just got to put stuff. You, know, you got to put, I've also used spruce boughs. I think I showed some footage of that too. But basically, if the following day or whatever, this is a good thing to do in the evening. So basically, the plants aren't going to have any real stress in the at night sort of thing. So there's not going to be any sun. So, you know, you move them, you water them really good. And you just leave them, you know, with the moonlight and all that sort of stuff. And then the next morning, yeah, if it's going to be overcast and rainy, just leave them. But if it's going to be sunny and that sort of thing, then you got to, uh, just showing you the little bit of greens I'm going to bring in and have with my lunch. But um, if it's going to be sunny and that sort of thing, you got to get something over the foliage. you, you got to block the side, either dapple it or just completely block it. You know, basically convince the plant it's still nighttime. And just, just let it, you know, recover. The roots will do some degree of work to get themselves reestablished and acclimatized. Um, but it's, it's going to take a bit of time. So, you, you know, what I do, and this is what I had to do with this bed, is that uh, every day, uh, you know, in the morning, I'd go out and I'd get I'd let them get about, like, you know, I'd let them get the sunrise. So, like, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., that sort of thing. But just before 8 a.m., I'd go out and throw a tarp over them or something, cardboard or, you know, some uh, branches of, you know, leafy branches, something, anything, just something to keep the sun off of them. And then around, oh, I don't know, 7 or 8 o'clock at night, i take that thing off. So I'm still letting them get a little bit of sun, you know, a couple hours of sun a day, but not much, right? Just enough so they know the world hasn't ended. <laughs> Right, a little bit of photosynthesis, you know, a little bit of light, um, sort of, almost like you're weaning them back on. But I mean, bare rooting a plant is, uh, you know, a real stress on a plant, and you know, some can recover from it better than others. Uh, I find lettuce is incredibly good at recovering from being bare rooted, and some things it, it pretty much kills them, or it stunts them so bad they really are never quite the same. Um, but uh, you know, kale and uh, this other plant, this uh, sorrel on the right, I don't even know what it's called exactly, but it's a kind of uh, lemony tasting uh, green um, that uh, I don't really know how it recovers. And on the left hand side, I got spinach growing there, but you can't really move spinach. That's another, that's so a lot of greens can be moved, but spinach, I've, you know, I've tried to move it in the past. And I'm sure if you pull it up big enough clump of earth with it when you move it, you can. But all my spinach are growing in close to one another. That's just how I planted them. Um, spinach hates being moved. Um, also, it's it's not going to stick around, right? So this kale is going to grow all summer long, and it's going to be growing in October, September, October, November. I'm going to be harvesting it right up until December, basically. Um, I leave it out there till maybe the first or second week of this December. And, I, and then at some point I just harvest it all and, and you know put it down in the freezer and that sort of thing um, but um, so the, the kale is going to be growing all all summer long so as the spinach 
you know, at some point the spinach is going to want to bolt and that sort of thing. So as I start removing spinach from the, the row on the left, um, that's why I'm leaving some kale in reserve in the center row. That's where the kale was sown. Uh, I replace the spinach with kale. Uh, this row I'm working in right now with this sorrel. Uh, I really don't know. This is my first year uh, playing with it, so I don't know if it's one of those leafy greens that just keeps giving you greens all summer or if it's going to bolt just like spinach and sort of give up in July. Uh, I really don't know. I don't know what, what it does. So if it does that, I'll just replace that entire row with kale. Uh, and if not, um, you know, I got so much kale there. There's enough kale in that one center row to fill two 4x10 garden beds easily. Maybe even three of them. And, uh, you know, I found, I got a family of uh, four, and everybody in the family loves kale, and we eat it all the time. And we eat it you know, all summer long, all fall, and I usually put enough down in the deep freeze that um, we're, we're still eating the kale I grew in the summer right up until March, sometimes April, right? So we were eating my 2019 kale right up until March or April. I can't remember exactly when we ran out. Um, and I think my wife actually found a uh, sort of freeze it in bricks. I've got videos on how I do it. Uh, I think how to blanch kale. I might have been the title or something like that. How to preserve kale or how to freeze kale. I can't remember uh, when I named the video. Um, but yeah, I think my wife found another brick of it. <laughs> a sort of surprise brick of kale. And we've been, so we ran out sometime in March, I think. And, uh, and so we were buying a bit of this, you know, this kale from the grocery store. And, you know, so with maybe two or three weeks we're having kale from the grocery store. We like to have it at least once a week. Um, and then she found that in the freezer. And what a difference in flavor. Uh, I'm just holding up to the camera um, spruce bough. So, I mean, the larger spruce boughs, I just chuck them in the woods. But anything small, it goes in the wheelbarrow. And, uh, and I run through it with, uh, run it over it with a lawnmower and use it as a mulch. And it, it's hard to tell on camera. I don't know if I hold it up to the camera, but... Uh, the, the sort of stuff that's on the surface of the soil that I'm running my fingers through right now, it's full of spruce needles, just full of them. Um, and, you know, people are always saying, oh, you're using spruce boughs, you're using spruce needles or pine needles, that's going to acidify your soil. Boy, if this soil had an acidity problem, do you think I'd be, you know, like, <laughs> look at the kale, look at my spinach. Do you think all that would be growing? Or I think I hold that up to the camera just to show the needles, right? That's almost all, I don't know if it comes across, but that's like 80, 90% spruce needles. And sure, I don't mix that in, but I mean, that's, uh, at least I don't think I did. Um, it was reasonably flat there, but uh, you know, it really doesn't uh, in any appreciable way uh, acidify the soil. I always have to mention this. I, I think I've done videos where I've spoken about that at length, why, and I've referred people to uh, university agricultural extension um, uh, articles explaining the, the soil chemistry behind that but uh, yeah you I mean yeah sure if you're tilling it in and okay here I am mixing it in a little bit but the, you know that stuff's been sitting on top of the soil for a while and I'm only mixing it in a couple inches but I am you know I've been doing this long enough to know that uh, you know let, let's say maybe I've got you know uh, I don't know an eighth of an inch <laughs> layer a little of some spruce needles on top of there it's not going to affect and they've been sitting out there an entire season so they've they've broken down they've changed it's basically just carbon at this point more carbon than anything else and so i'm just mixing a bit of that carbon matter in with the soil and uh it's not going to deplete the nitrogen in any appreciable way it's been sitting out on that soil for a long time with other things breaking down so you know um, remember that that pile of stuff that was sitting there was being broken down by worms and other organisms there's nitrogen in that too so anyway I'm just trying to speak to <laughs> comments people are gonna make uh, you know just follow up watch my garden tour have a look at this garden bed uh, you know next garden tour and the one after that and, you know there's a real problem you're you're not gonna see all the big green plants that are gonna result from this <laughs> Hopefully I'm not jinxing myself here. Um, so here I am just plucking. So this is the way you should, like, you know, the sorrel. I'm taking it in a clump. So that's probably four plants right there. And after a couple weeks, um, based on, you know, how everything looks, 
uh, I'll pick one of those plants to live in that space and I'll just eliminate the other ones. I'll cut them up and stick them in a salad bowl and have, have them in my salad sort of thing. And I don't know if it comes across on camera, but while I'm, you know, there's a good clump there. Right, I'm spacing them out maybe a foot apart, right? That's the good spacing. You know, these kale plants, uh, I can't speak to these sorrel, but the kale, they get almost two feet high and they take up a lot of space. So it doesn't seem like a lot of plants for the space, but uh, each kale, you know, really can use a two by two space or at least 18 inch by 18 inch space for, an, for a kale plant. That's, they'll fill that whole space. They get big, you know, when they're healthy and they're happy and they're getting everything they want, they grow big. Uh, so yeah, that, that's the sorrel moved in a clump like that. And uh, now I'm about to, I think I'm doing a little bit of weeding here, but yeah, look how many of those kale plants are growing and sort of intermixed in together. But yeah, grabbing a big chunk of them, not messing around here. Uh, and you can watch the follow-up videos. And when I say follow-up videos, I mean my garden tour videos because I show everything. So, you know, a lot of people will ask me, can you do a follow-up video on this? Can you do a follow-up video on that? Um, the garden tour videos, if you look at the, the date of any video I've done, the garden tour videos, I do one basically, usually the first, I don't stick to this 100%, but I try to do the first weekend of every month <clears throat> during garden season. So if you know when I put a video out and I did something, you, know, you can watch the garden tour a month after that and watch the garden tour a month after that. And uh, I'll probably talk about it in the garden tour video. Um, right, usually the garden tour video is fairly lengthy, so, uh, but uh, I was just picking some weeds out of that one there. I noticed when I picked it up that there was some, uh, I don't know what it was, clover or something like that growing in there. Um, so yeah, just moving that kale there. But yeah, if you want to see a follow-up on this, I'm probably not going to do um, a specific follow-up <laughs> for this particular, but it's a pretty esoteric topic to speak to. Moved plant recovery follow-up video um, I don't know um, you know how many people would <laughs> actually watch that uh, but yeah if you're if you're intrigued or you're interested or you're curious to know uh, how this turned out just watch um, one of my videos from later on and uh, you know like later like you know the June June garden tour July Gordon garden tour um, you, you know yeah and if all goes wrong, I've always got the kale. This this kale, it can grow. I mean, it's important to thin out the kale. So all the kale that's growing in this, <laughs> so many of them are in there, right? That's like probably three plants. And, you know, if I just left them like that, three plants in a clump, they would grow. But the plant will just be so much bigger and healthier and stronger um, if it's just one plant getting all that space. Um, and the only reason I'm speaking to this is, is not for my, my regular viewers, they know that, but the new viewer who, uh, you know, there's a lot of different uh, resources out there for gardeners, a lot of gurus that have some strange ideas <laughs> about planting. And sure, it, it's, it's easier just to leave everything and let nature take its course and that sort of thing. And, and you can do that. Um, but... Uh, Sometimes a uh, guiding hand, <laughs> you know, you're working with nature, right? You're working with it and uh, a guiding hand uh, can have, uh, you know, some pretty positive, you know, human beings have been guiding things for quite some time and, and we're, we're pretty good at it. So yeah, a little bit of a guiding hand isn't so bad. So here's a bed where um, there was spinach and kale growing here and I moved a whole bunch of lettuce from another bed. I had a bed that I started lettuce in end of March and uh, I wanted to plant uh, oh, eggplant and peppers in that under a dome. Uh, so I needed that domed bed. So uh, this bed's gonna be, for now anyway, a green bed. So I moved all that uh, stuff there. And here's another bed where um, I've got, uh, at the very end of the bed, I had Swiss chard growing under a little dome, a dome box sort of thing. And uh, it was time to move the Swiss chard. But uh, step one uh, <laughs> is just uh, cleaning up the part of the bed that's just covered in all of this uh, uh, yard waste. <laughs> Not only yard waste, but um, because it's been like that through the period of time where I'm getting my garden 
you know, ready all spring. Uh, anytime I needed a place to throw something, <laughs> I'd throw it on this end of this bed because I knew I wasn't going to be sticking anything in it until like the end of May. And, you know, really, um, it's a bit, I should have waited another couple weeks to move these Swiss chairs. They're pretty small and pretty tender, and I, I hope I didn't uh, hurt them too bad. Um, you know, again, I, th I thought I was going to rain for like four days straight, and it didn't, so I had to put everything on uh, life support and just keep... Uh, keep her going sort of thing so uh and this last little clip is just me putting as one of my canvas painting tarps uh if you know anything about painting it's what they call a runner but uh it's just uh it was one of the i had to just i only had a boot i had stuff to do that day and i didn't have time to figure around so uh instead of uh scrounging around for spruce boughs and stuff like that i just threw one of these uh, paint tarps on top of there and that's a pretty good good means to keep the sun off the garden so uh, that's 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 all you got to do uh, for a number of days. Um, any day where it's going to be really sunny after you've moved plants, um, you got to protect them like that, or they'll just uh, they'll be so stressed, and you're gonna you know they're just gonna struggle. So anyway, a uh, little bit of uh, look at the nuts and bolts, and just little things I do and talking through it. So I hope you found it interesting. If you did please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it. Have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching. Take advantage of those rainy days. <laughs>